American alligator is a resilient reptile that has survived here on Earth for 200 million years. Once on the verge of extinction, the population has rebounded. But these gators face new challenges. Loss of habitat has forced them from their wetland homes. And biologists now suspect they could be a threat to a true Texas treasure, the model duck. Life is not always easy when you're the monarch of the marsh. It's midnight in the swamp, and while most folks are fast asleep, these wildlife biologists are on the hunt for American alligators. I off. Deep within southeast Texas' most murky marshes, a study is underway. The goal is to find out what these feisty gators are feasting on. Biologists fear the gators are eating many of the model ducks that live here in this same habitat. In 1996, our department initiated a model duck research banding project along the Texas coast. During that time, occasionally we saw American alligators consume model ducks that we had just released. And we were wondering if that happens when we're banding model ducks, what's going on in the marsh when we're not there. So we wanted to determine what kind of impact American alligators are having on our model duck populations. Was that number 37? 37, yeah. Biologists treat the model duck with all this care and attention because it's a pretty unique duck. The species spends its whole life here in Texas. The model duck is a very important species because it is the only resident uh, non-migratory duck, duck species in Texas. Since their numbers have been dropping since the 80s, we've got major concerns and we've done uh, extensive research trying to improve the critical needs of, of the model duck. So biologists hope this study will determine whether alligators are to blame for the drop in model duck numbers. Get that news! Get the news! Back in the marsh, biologists grab the big gators with a long pole and snare. But the real challenge is safely capturing the smaller ones. The work takes a strong and steady hand. You put a death grip on their neck. And on the larger four or five foot alligators, once we grab the head, we grab them by the tail where their pivot point is on their tail because their tail can hurt you just as much as their teeth. A lot of faith in that duck tag. Pulled from the swamp, teethy jaws duct taped shut and each one carefully bagged on board, the team heads back to land. It's time to get a close up look at what these reptiles are eating. It's ironic that these ancient animals could be a threat to an entire species of waterfowl. It was just a few years ago when the alligator was simply struggling to survive. Unregulated hunting, a frenzy for hides in the fashion industry, and a loss of habitat almost wiped out the alligator here in the United States. In the 40s and 50s, there was uncontrolled hunting of the alligators. There was no seasons or bag limits on alligators, and consequently, the uh, the uncontrolled hunting caused a, a major reduction in, in the alligators. And besides that, there was just an innate fear of, of crocodilian type species. And in the 50s, there was a, the Tarzan movies and the, the fear of, of crocodiles. Consequently, the, the alligators got caught up in that. Numbers dropped so low, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service listed the American alligator as an endangered species in 1973. But thanks to conservation efforts and habitat restoration, the American alligator bounced back. Data from the early 70s shows most alligators could only be found in a small pocket of southeast Texas. Now, their range has expanded dramatically, with the population estimated well over 300,000.
to monitor the success of the species, biologists spend some steamy days in August checking alligator nests. It's very important that we get out and understand what our population is doing. Oh yeah, here's one coming out of the egg. Yep, that little grunt sound that stimulates the other alligators inside their nest to start hatching too. And it also gave them a, a direction to go. When they hatch out, they know to go that direction toward the little grunt. Because mama, you can see mama's right there waiting, and the little baby's making his way toward the water. Oh, he's going to climb on mama's head, ain't he? <laughs> While the alligator may look cute as a baby, it's a different situation when a large adult gator Pretty is good. in your front yard. I'm glad he's over there in the ditch and not on the front porch, huh? <laughs> As the habitat shrinks and decreases, these alligators have to find new habitat. So they get into these water systems and they follow it wherever it takes them. Uh, it appears that they're moving further inland because of the destruction of the habitat here in this coastal area here. And that keeps game Hi. warden Joe Goff pretty busy. Did you called about an alligator this morning? Yes, sir, I did. There's one in the ditch in the front yard and I'm just kind of worried about it with the kids and everything. While it used to be rare to get gator nuisance calls, now he spends most of his days in the spring and early summer relocating alligators. The homeowners uh, need to understand that they're in alligator habitat, and it's more of a perceived threat than anything else. I mean, if these folks will sit back and realize that they've got coyotes and bobcats and other wild animals that are right there in close proximity to them as well. They just need to understand that the alligator's in his natural habitat, and he won't bother them if they don't bother him. His eyes are scary. He's going to go to a new home out in the swamp. While they might not be very popular for folks in big cities, they are the stars of the show at Brazos Bend State Park just 30 miles southwest of Houston. Oh, I found one. Oh, no, 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 that's alligator. See him right here on the bank, right here on the bank. Hey, go right there on the bank. I go down there. Well, go down there. No, you can't go down there. The park is about 5,000 acres, and it's a, it's a mixture of marshes and swamps and rivers and creeks, and all these provide really great habitat for, for alligators. Spring and fall is probably the best time. If you pick a, a spring day when we've had some cool weather and the water temperature is still cool, and you can come out here on a warm day, the alligators will be up on sides of the trails and out on the islands out here basking in the sun. This one's about a year and a half old, and we got this alligator from a nest over on Creekfield Lake. Naturally, the highlight of every school kid's trip out here is getting to see the alligators. They're going to count how many alligators they can find, and each little school group will have a competition over who can find the most. And that's kind of the fun part of it. But, but while they're out here, it'll also give us a chance to talk about uh, the way Texas used to be, about why we need to protect these habitats. 201.6, female. Remember those biologists grappling with gators? Well, it's now early in the morning, and the work continues with phase two. Well, now we've cut all the gators that we need this morning. Now we're starting to process our first one. Put them on this restraining board with ATV cargo tie-downs. To see what the gators eat, biologists must flush their stomachs. We want to get this PVC as far back in the mouth as we can, keep their mouth nice and open. There we go, nice and wide. We count four scales in front of the rear legs, and we'll insert the hose into the gator this far, and that'll be the, about the center of the stomach. There it's going. I got water. So what now he's doing, he's filling the stomach up with water. You can see this, the stomach starting to expand with water. And once it gets full, Matt will push on both sides and forward, and it, it should expel whatever's in its stomach. You're doing good. He's got lots of stuff in there. She's got some in her. Ooh! A bunch of grass. That looks like snake, snake scales. The biologists look for those model duck feathers. Here you can see some of the intestinal worms, the alligators, stomachs. More crab. That looks like a uh, soprinidon, sheep's head minnow. 
Crews examined alligators from both the central coast near Port Lavaca. 13.7 head length. And the upper coast near Port Arthur. And while they found lots of crab shells, spiders, and snake skins, no model duck feathers. Out of the 150 alligator stomach that we pumped so far, we found feathers in one stomach, but we don't believe these to be model duck feathers. So, so far, preliminary looks like the alligators are not the culprit. That it's our first thought that there's, there's more going on out there in the marsh than we know about. Even though the study continues, it appears the alligator is not to blame for the drop in model duck numbers. Instead, these marsh neighbors' lives seem to be parallel. Both rely on a healthy wetland, and both need plenty of habitat to survive. More work needs to be done before scientists figure out what's happening to the model duck. But as long as sufficient habitat remains, the alligator will continue to reign as monarch of the marsh. The alligator is very important in our marshes. It is the keystone species out there. It's the top carnivore in the United States. It's very important for our ecosystem out there that we have those alligators out there in the wild. People have a better understanding for these animals. You know, initially we didn't understand much about them, and as humans, we tend to fear what we don't understand. The more we understand about these animals, the more we can appreciate them. And in order to protect them, we really have to appreciate them first. 